My name is Jonathan Franzen. I'm a writer. I'm told I'm here to talk about my first novel, which came out 25 years ago, The 27th City. If you get asked often enough what your favorite books are, you really have two choices. You can either quote yourself and sound canned, or you can be dishonest and come up with books that actually don't mean that much to you. Uh, I could mention the sci-fi that I was reading uh, in junior high and high school. Um, I think my first real exposure was a trilogy. John Christopher, I think I want to say the name was. It's about these, uh, the Earth has been taken over by these tripods. It's the renegade remnants of uncoopted human beings fighting the tyranny of the tripod. <laughs> Which has a kind of, it's sort of applicable right now, doesn't it? Uh, and from there I moved on to, um, actually Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood's End was a big book for me. That was my portal to grown-up sci-fi. Uh, read uh, Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy, you know, front to back, and then started at the front again. And, did that a few more times. Um, so yeah, and ultimately I stopped reading sci-fi. I'm not entirely sure why, but it was perfect for me because I was a science guy and it was fiction. So in a, in a sense, it was a portal itself, uh, a way out of science into fiction. <laughs> My personal 20th century canon includes a couple of novels that are recognized as great novels but are still not read as much as they should be. Um, I always plug Christina Stead's The Man Who Loved Children. Um, and even though we won the Nobel Prize, people still don't read Independent People by Halder Loxness. Uh, when they do, they're glad they did. Uh, so I, you know, are they neglected? In my view, yeah. I mean, I think there are, I think people should be reading independent people uh, instead of E.M. Forster. Not that you shouldn't read E.M. Forster too, but um, read him second. <laughs> morning, I write in the morning. Uh, <clears throat> if it doesn't happen within an hour of breakfast, the day is lost. Yeah. Um, it's important to be still sort of half asleep because uh, once, I'm, once I'm exposed to even just the email queue, my brain starts jangling with the noise of the world. Um, whereas if I can make it to the office without anything but maybe the New York Times to disturb me, um, I'm closer to... Uh, being asleep and dreaming, which is kind of my ideal for a, an office, a place that would be good for sleeping, dark, cold, silent. How many hours do you usually write at a time? Well, these are very personal questions. Uh, how many hours do I write at a time? Do you like write all day or is it like... Do I write all day? Um, 5 a.m. to noon and then you're done. You know, back when I was starting out with the 27th City, I would go, yeah, I would go 8 or even 10 hours. Um, I was a young man with great stamina uh, and a lot to prove. Uh, now, 6 hours is a long work day. And if I go a minute past that, I'll be wiped out the next day. Again, it's all sort of, it's, it's kind of the same thing. You don't want to get your head too revved because uh, then you don't sleep. And it's better to be a bit tamped down. That's how you develop a rhythm of working day after day. This is an interesting book. I saw it, since you ask. Yes. An interesting thing I did lately was read Adele Waldman, Waldman's first novel. Um, I think she's a writer to watch. This is kind of a, uh, 
it's a more deeply clever book than you might think as you start reading it. Um, uh, other things? Um, in the City. Wow, wrong person to ask for hot recommendations for restaurants. Well, I can recommend Jamaica Bay National Wildlife Refuge for, uh, for a nice place to take a walk and see some birds. Um, and I can take this opportunity to wish that the National Wildlife Service would repair the sandy damage to the West Pond at Jamaica Bay so that it is fresh water again. Um, what else? Uh, Central Park, a lot to say about that too. Thank you.